Welcome to our deep dive. Um, today, we're looking at something that uh, could really shake things up online. Yeah. Department of Justice is uh, suing Google. Mm -hmm. They're specifically going after Chrome. Right. So they're a browser. Yeah. And uh, what has everybody talking is that the DOJ is going after a product that, like, most of us use every day. Oh, for sure. So. Yeah. I mean, this is a this is a big one because Chrome has such a huge market share. Yeah. You know. OK. So what's the DOJ's argument here? What are they saying? Well, their main point is that Google is using Chrome's popularity mm -hmm. to basically control Internet search. OK. And online advertising to control the whole market. Pretty much. Yeah. They're saying Google is leveraging its power in one area to stifle competition in another. So it's kind of like what happened with Microsoft back in the day with Internet Explorer, right? Yeah, there are definitely some parallels. Like when they were bundling with Windows. Exactly. It's that same idea of bundling and using dominance in one area to push other products. Right. The DOJ is claiming that Google's making Chrome the default browser on Android, and that's how they're steering users towards their own search engine and all their advertising services. Okay, but here's where I get a little confused. Doesn't the fact that Chrome is open source complicate things? Yeah, that's where it gets really interesting. Like anyone can contribute to Chrome's code, right? Right, exactly. Right. That definitely makes the DOJ's case a bit tougher. How so? Well, because it undercuts the argument that Google has like total control over Chrome. Okay. The way Microsoft did with Internet Explorer. Right. Google can say, hey, Chrome's success is because of how good it is and because of the open source community, yeah. you know, not because of anti-competitive behavior. Got it. So the DOJ has a harder case to make than it might seem at first glance. Yeah, for sure. It's not as straightforward as it might appear. Okay. But let's say for argument's sake that the DOJ does manage to convince a court that Google needs to be reined in. Okay. What could happen? What are some possible outcomes? Well, the DOJ is pushing for some pretty big changes. Like what? One option is they could force Google to completely separate from Chrome. Wait. Like spin it off into a totally separate company. Okay. Another possibility is they could impose some behavioral remedies. Behavioral remedies. What does that even mean? It means restrictions on what Google can do with Chrome. Uh-huh. For example, they might prevent Google from making Chrome the default on Android. Got it. And then, of course, there's always the chance of a settlement right. where Google agrees to make some concessions. To avoid a trial. Yeah, exactly. To avoid a long, drawn-out legal battle. Okay, so let's dig into those potential outcomes a little bit more. Sure. Let's start with the most drastic one, forcing Google to sell off Chrome. That's a pretty huge move, right? Mm -hmm. What would that actually look like? It would be a massive undertaking. I mean, you're talking about taking Chrome right. and ripping it away from all of Google's other products. Right. Gmail search maps everything. Oh, yeah. And then you have to figure out what happens to all the engineers and developers who work on Chrome. It would be incredibly complex, both logistically and legally. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's such a tightly integrated ecosystem. Exactly. Okay, so let's say somehow that does happen. Chrome becomes a separate company. Would we as users even notice a difference? That's a great question. And honestly, it's hard to say for sure. Like, would a standalone Chrome browser work any differently? It's possible. Really? How so? Well, this new Chrome entity could have totally different priorities. Mm -hmm. Maybe they go all in on privacy. Okay. And become the go-to browser for security conscious users. Interesting. Or maybe they focus on making the browser even faster. Right. And more lightweight. It's hard to know. Yeah, it really depends on the vision of this hypothetical new company. Yeah, true. Mm. But wouldn't there also be a risk that Chrome could become less secure? Oh, absolutely. If it doesn't have Google's resources behind it. Right. Google's got a whole security team. Yeah, they invest heavily in Chrome's security infrastructure. A smaller independent Chrome might not have the same resources to dedicate to things like patching vulnerabilities. Yeah. And, and fighting a, off cyber attacks. Okay, so spinning off Chrome is a big what if. Definitely. With a lot of unknowns. Yeah, a lot of potential benefits, but also some significant risks. Right. Makes yeah. sense. Okay, so what about those behavioral remedies that the DOJ is talking about? Okay. What kind of impact could those have? Well, one of the big ones is preventing Google from making Chrome the default browser on Android. Right. If that happened, it could really shake things up in the browser market. How so? Well, suddenly users would have to choose a browser. When they first get their phone. Right out of the gate. Okay. It would give competitors like Firefox and Safari a much better chance to gain some traction. 
Interesting. And wouldn't that also have a big impact on Google's data collection practices? Oh, absolutely. Because Chrome is a major part of their whole advertising machine. It's the engine that drives it. Right. Chrome collects a ton of user data. Like what kind of data? Everything you do, online browsing, history, search queries, you name it. Wow. It's all tracked and analyzed. And that's what allows Google to target ads so effectively. Exactly. This data is pure gold for targeted advertising. Right. So if Google's ability to collect this data through Chrome is restricted, it could have huge implications for the entire online advertising industry. Wow, that's a big deal. Okay. okay, so before we get too deep into the advertising side of things, step back for a sec. Okay. For the DOJ to actually win this case, what hurdles do they need to clear? Right. It's not enough to just say Google is big and powerful. No, you're absolutely right. They have to prove that Google's actions are actually hurting consumers. Not just their competitors. Exactly. And that's where things get tricky. How so? Well, what does consumer harm even mean in the digital age? Right. Is it higher prices, reduced innovation, a less secure browsing experience? Good questions. These are tough questions that the court will have to grapple with. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And what about the open source nature of Chrome? Does that give Google a strong defense? It's definitely a key argument for them. How so? They can say, look, Chrome's dominance is because it's a great open source project, uh, not because of any shady tactics. Right. It's a nuanced issue that the DOJ will have to address head on. Okay, so we've got this huge legal battle brewing. Yeah. The DOJ trying to prove that Google's dominance is harmful mm -hmm. and Google fighting back with their open source defense. Right. But we can't forget about the elephant in the room here. Chrome and advertising. Exactly. Chrome's role in Google's advertising empire. Yeah, that's where things get really interesting. Yeah, for sure. That's the heart of the matter. It is. Chrome isn't just a way to browse the web. It's a data collection powerhouse right. that fuels Google's targeted advertising. Okay, so let's dive into that. Let's do it. Chrome is like, uh, it's like the key to this giant treasure chest of user data for Google. Okay. Every search, every website you visit, it's all being tracked. Yeah, it's a little creepy when you think about it. It is. I mean, it's all analyzed, too. Right. So this is how Google serves up those, like, eerily personalized ads. Exactly. The ones that make you wonder if they're reading your mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, how did they know I was looking at hiking boots? Right. It's because they've built these super detailed profiles of users, and right. they can predict our interests and behaviors with crazy accuracy. So it's like Chrome is this silent partner yeah just quietly collecting data in the background that's a good way to put it most people don't even think about it right we just go about our online lives exactly but all that data is the fuel that powers google's advertising business and this is a big part of why the doj is concerned about chrome's dominance right oh absolutely they're arguing that all this data collection gives google an unfair advantage in the online ad market right because they have so much information about us couldn't Google argue, though, that this data collection actually benefits users? Hmm, that's a good point. Like targeted ads can be better than just seeing random ads. Right. They could say that it's all about personalization yeah. and making our online experiences more relevant. Less annoying. Exactly. But I think the DOJ would counter that this personalization comes at a cost. The cost of our privacy. Exactly. They'd say Google's data collection is too intrusive. Right. And that users don't have enough control over how their data is used. So it's this classic debate about privacy versus personalization. Yeah, it's a tough one. Is it possible to have both? That's the million dollar question. It really is. And it's something that's going to be debated for a long time. In the courts, in the public sphere. Everywhere. This case is going to touch a lot of nerves. Yeah, no doubt. Okay. And then this whole issue gets even more complex when you bring cookies into the mix. Right. Cookies. Those little pieces of code that websites use to track our activity. Yeah, cookies are at the heart of online advertising. So how do they work? Well, they let websites remember your preferences, yeah. like what's in your shopping cart. Okay. But they also track your browsing habits. Mm -hmm. And that's how they target ads. Exactly. And because Chrome is so dominant, it has a lot of influence over how cookies work. Across the entire web. Right. Chrome sets the standards in a lot of ways. So could Google use this power to give their own advertising services an advantage? Potentially. Like maybe even make things harder for their competitors. That's exactly what the DOJ is worried about. So they can manipulate the whole online advertising ecosystem. Yeah, they could give preferential treatment to their own ad platforms. Right. 
or make it harder for rival ad networks to track users. That sounds pretty anti-competitive. It does. And that's what the DOJ will have to prove. So is there any evidence that Google has actually done this? That's the big question. The DOJ's case hinges on proving that Google has used its cookie power to stifle competition. Interesting. Okay, let's switch gears for a minute and talk about something that I think sometimes gets overlooked in these discussions about antitrust. What the innovation. What about the impact on innovation? Yeah. If Google just keeps dominating through Chrome, could that stifle innovation in the browser market? That's a really important point, and I think it's a valid concern. Like if Google doesn't have any real competition, right? do they really have a reason to innovate? Maybe not as much. You know, they might just rest on their laurels. And we end up stuck with the same old browser. Yeah. No new features, no improvements. Because Google doesn't feel any pressure to push forward. Right. Competition is usually what drives innovation. When companies are fighting for market share? They have to come up with new ideas. Right. They have to make their products better. And offer better services. Exactly. So a lack of competition can lead to stagnation. Absolutely. It's like a rising tide lifts all boats. Mm, I like that. A more competitive browser market would benefit everyone. Yeah. Consumers, developers, the whole web ecosystem. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So we've talked about the potential for consumer harm in terms of privacy competition and innovation. Right. But let's play devil's advocate for a moment. Yeah. Okay, I like where this is going. What if breaking up Chrome isn't the solution that some people think it is? Yeah, that's where things get really nuanced. What do you mean? While there are definitely potential benefits to a more fragmented browser market, mm. but there are also risks and downsides to consider. Okay, like what? Well, as we discussed earlier, a standalone Chrome could potentially be less secure. Right, if it doesn't have Google's resources. Exactly. And then there's the potential for a more fragmented web experience. Okay, what does that mean? It means websites might not work as well across different browsers. Oh, like back in the day. Yeah. When you had to worry about whether a site was designed for Netscape or Internet Explorer. Exactly. It was a nightmare. Yeah, those were not fun times. So a fragmented browser market could lead to compatibility issues, frustrated developers, and a worse user experience. Yeah, that's not good. And then there's the whole logistical nightmare of breaking up Google. Right. It's not like you can just snap your fingers and it's done. No, it would be a huge undertaking. It would probably take years. Maybe even decades. Possibly. And there's no guarantee that it would actually be good for consumers. So it's a gamble. It is. With both potential rewards and risks. Yeah, it's a tough call. Yeah. But regardless of what happens, I think this case has already had a big impact. I agree. It sparked a conversation about big tech and their power. Right. It's put these companies on notice. That regulators are watching them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it feels like we've just scratched the surface here. I know, right? There's so much to unpack. It really makes you think about the kind of internet we want. Yeah, what do we want? I mean, do we want a few walled gardens controlled by these tech giants? Right. Or do we want something more open? Where anyone can innovate. Exactly, yeah. a more level playing field. And the thing is, most of us just use the internet without really thinking about these big questions. I know, right? It's just there. We take it for granted. We totally do. But the decisions made in this case by the DOJ, by Google, even by us as users, are going to have a ripple effect. For years to come. Yeah, this is a big one. Okay, so you said earlier that even if the DOJ loses this case, they've already achieved something significant. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. I think this lawsuit, regardless of the outcome, has put big tech on notice. Okay. It's a signal that regulators are paying attention. That they're not going to just sit back and watch. Exactly. They're not going to let these companies dominate without asking some tough questions. So it's a wake-up call. Yeah, for Google, but also for the whole tech industry. Amazon, Apple Meta, all of them. All of them. They're all under the microscope now. And this case could embolden regulators to be even more aggressive. Oh, absolutely. In going after anti-competitive practices. I think we're entering a new era of antitrust enforcement. One that's specifically focused on the digital world. Exactly. The old rules might not apply anymore. It's fascinating and a little bit scary. It is. I mean, who knows what the internet will look like in 5, 10, 20 years. Yeah, it's impossible to predict. Will it be more fragmented, more decentralized, or will we just have a new set of tech giants? Right, replacing the old ones. It's a question we'll have to grapple with. But one thing's for sure, this case is gonna have a lasting impact. Absolutely. On how we think about the internet. 
and the companies that control it. And it reminds us that the internet isn't some neutral force. Right. It's built on choices, on code, on standards that are constantly evolving. And we have a role to play in shaping those standards. As users, as citizens, we have a voice. So if we zoom out and look at the big picture, what's the key takeaway for our listener today? I'd say it's this. This battle over Google and Chrome is just one small part of a much bigger struggle. For the soul of the internet. Exactly. It's a reminder that we can't just be passive consumers of technology. Right. We need to stay informed, ask tough questions, and demand better from these companies. Because the internet belongs to all of us. It does. It's a shared resource, a public good. And its future should be shaped by all of us. Not just a handful of powerful corporations. Well said. That's a great point to end on. I think so. This conversation is far from over. But hopefully our deep dive today has given our listeners some food for thought. Yeah, and a deeper understanding of what's at stake. That's it for our deep dive into the DOJ's antitrust case against Google. We hope you found it informative and thought-provoking. As always, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep questioning the world around you.